Good evening. Welcome to Kennedy Hills. If you will, grab the Christ. 
having been buried with him in baptism in which you were raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses, the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of death that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them and him. Paul tells us in Colossians that where we were without Jesus' sacrifice is dead. We were nothing but a body corpse. And on top of that, we were in debt. We were in debt to the law. And as a student in debt, I can tell you that's stressful. It freaks you out a little bit. <laughs> but what has Jesus and his sacrifice done for us? It's taken away that debt, the shame that we had of that. And has now brought us to new life as creatures who are no longer dead to our sins. And now we can live for him. Baptism isn't just a cool party trip where you dump someone in the water, you come up and they're now clean and alive and nice. It's that we have faith in a God who works. And when we are obedient to him, we have faith that he's going to make us complete, that he's going to make us alive. There's nothing special about the water that we're dipped into. We could be dipped anywhere. What's powerful is God and Jesus' love for us and God's mercy on us. Because we don't deserve this. Something that we should freely accept, and we can freely accept. So tonight, there's a lot of people who are baptized here, and I hope that as you read, as you read the Colossians two again, that you just you are so thankful for the, the power that comes from God to be risen to new life, to be given a new opportunity to live for Him. And if tonight you're still a little bit skeptical about baptism and what it means, go and talk to someone, ask someone the question, because we're willing to talk to you and help you understand it better. But if you're tonight and you feel the need to accept this, this gift that has really been offered to you, this power that God is willing to give to you to be made alive in him and to clear your death of sin, please come forward as you say this. Bring Christ to
I'm happy to report we don't have any new names that were given to me that are on, on the sick list, but we certainly want to remember our prayers for those that are listed week to week in the book. Uh, other announcements of interest, uh, for those interested in attending the graveside service for Harper Hall, it will be at the Hall Cemetery in Tony, Alabama, this Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Time. Tony, Alabama is in close proximity of Athens, Alabama, for those who do not. Don't forget, in about 10 days, we have our congregational meeting on August the 26th. And also mark on your calendar September 7th through 9th for our weekend meeting with our Adams. Uh, just a reminder to be sure to pick up the bulletin as you leave. And with that, please join me in the closing prayer. Our Heavenly Father, our Lord, and our Savior, we are honored to glorify your name. Thank you for the grace you have shown us. You are our healer, our provider, and our redeemer. We pray that we'll always set a time during each day to talk with you, and we thank you for listening to our prayers. We sometimes get comfortable in our daily lives and forget all we have that is provided by you. We thank you for your word which shows us how we should live during our time on this earth. We pray for the elders of this congregation who lead us. Please continue to give them strength and knowledge in making the decisions that they make. Be with those mentioned in the bulletin who have issues with their health. Please strengthen them as only you can. Heavenly Father, forgive us for the sin we commit. We thank you for the tremendous sacrifice.